In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord today and I'm excited. I'm excited because I came with a word of blessing. And I want you to turn to your Bibles to Judges chapter 16. Stand with me for the reading of the word. This morning the Lord wants to speak to you on the topic. A revival of God's power and the weapons. A revival of God's power and the weapons. Reading from Judges chapter 16 verse 28. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O oh my God, that I may be, a, may be at once avenge of the Philistines from my two eyes. And Samson called unto the Lord and he said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee. Only this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenger of the Philistines from my two eyes. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. There are numerous leaders and warfare Christians who have laid aside the weapons and strategies that the Lord gave them to fight with to defeat the enemy. Because they've allowed themselves to become impotent by being acclimated to the uneventful, passive, cowardly, spiritual environment they socialize, minister, and live in. Remember, when Saul offered David his armor, he said, I haven't proven those because his warfare with them was uneventful. Saul was at home hiding and he had armor that was supposed to be invincible and David said I'm not going to become acclimated to this kind of armor because by your hiding it is proven that it is not doing anything for you and this is what has happened to numerous leaders and warfare Christians because they found themselves in an atmosphere where people don't fight where people don't use the kind and flow in the kind of anointing that they have upon their lives, they have become impotent. Additionally, there are countless mature saints who have abandoned the supernatural tools that God gave them and have acquired the brand name tools of another because they felt that the tools of a mega preacher or famous preacher was better than the ones that God gave them to prevail against the devil. So you have people going about buying supposedly supernatural keys that they get from an online distributor for a thousand dollars or so that is supposed to open the warehouse of blessings. You have Christians buying aromatherapy oils and creams uh, to put on their bodies to relieve them from the spirit of anxiety and depression because some mega preacher said what you have isn't going to work because it doesn't have a brand to it which is the name of a man uh, but the tools you possess are the ones that were given to you by Jehovah Gabor the God of might and the God of power and for that reason they're rubbing down every night with aromatherapy the depression is not there because they have abandoned their supernatural tools while several felt that no one would want to use or take seriously the weapons of mass destruction the Lord gave them because of who they are. If you don't have notoriety, there are those who don't want to take any recommendation that you may give them. Where they came from. Some people tend to think that because they believe that you come from a third world country, that the God on the inside of you is a third world God. The God on the inside of you is a God whose anointing is devalued because your currency might devalue. 
that the power of God that is on the inside of you is poor because your country might be deemed poor by another that has more than you. So these people find it difficult uh, to use the power that the Lord has given them uh, because sometimes uh, of what they presently have. Uh, if you are not driving a Cadillac, people don't think uh, that you are really anointed. Uh, if you are not living upstate New York, uh, you are not living in a condominium. Uh, they don't believe that you possess the power of God. But when last I read the word, the Bible told me that they David came out of a cave uh, and he slew the Philistines. Uh, all great men of God came from a cave. Uh, they came from a hole. Uh, they came from some walk of life uh, that no one would have expected them to come from. But they were filled with the power of God. The Bible tells us uh, that Jesus' parents were, were poor. And so the scribes and the Pharisees uh, didn't want to receive him uh, because he wasn't born in Herod's palace. But everywhere he went, he was doing good. He's the mighty healer. He cleansed the lepers. He cast out demons. And when the people saw him, they started walking. So it tells me, your house doesn't mean you're full of power. It doesn't. It tells me that your bank account doesn't mean that you're anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost. This neglect of divinely instructed and guided spiritual warfare left the devil undertended to some degree. And because he was not dealt with, with the same ferocity as he was in the past when the weapons of God were used, the enemy was able to come into their lives or church and establish himself unhindered after which he launches attack at the jugular of the anointing with the same intention to kill. When you don't do what you are anointed to do, when you allow the unbelief and the disbelief of others to cause you to become impotent, when you allow other people's opinion of you to think that you are too supernatural and it doesn't take all that and you allow the power of God to diminish on your life, that's the time the devil would come in. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that after the disciples were threatened by the religious sect, that they went back to their own company and they began to pray and as they began to pray that grace, great grace fell upon them and the very house where they were it shook and if we are going to prevail against the enemy you've got to keep company with people who believe what you believe you've got to keep company with someone who've already killed a bear and a lion if you've not cast a demon out. You don't need to tell me quick because you don't know what is involved to cause demons to be subject to the God that is on the inside of you. If you are working miracles, don't tell me that I've gone off somewhere and I've become crazy. If you don't have any authority in the realm of the spirit, how dare you tell me to quit what I am doing. I have proven the armor that I wear and I refuse to put it down. There are some people because they want to be in the company of the who is who. They, 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 they make the decision that they're going to displease God and they're going to please man. Because if I want to hang out with the Pope, I have to quit this stuff and become accustomed to Hail Mary full of grace. If I want to hang out with those who don't believe that the Holy Ghost and power still exists for today and go for a milder God gospel uh, then I need to quit the way I speak uh, and I have to stop talking about all this power and anointing thank God in all my life uh, I've never craved the friendship of man uh, more than I've craved the friendship of God you don't want you don't have to include me in your friendship uh, you don't have to invite me to your wedding you don't have to remember me for Christmas if God is remembering me I've got everything going for 
me if the God of all gods, the King of all kings, and the Lord of all lords is seeking my friendship as he sought friendship with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as he sought friendship with Joseph and David, then you have it going on. I'm not going to abandon the power of God for the friendship of a celebrity because when trouble comes it is only God who can help you when problems come tell me who can you call upon that's why the songwriter says I've got an anchor that keeps my soul steadfast and sure while the bellows roll so he's been left unattended in the lives of individual Christians and in the lives of churches because when poor men want to become great they decide they're going to do what others tell them to do and everything will be all right and so once that has happened the devil said good I've been able to beguile him I've been able to deceive him or her now is the time to kill because his weapons are in storage Many warfare Christians, their weapons are in storage or they have their weapons in a glass case like trophies or I used to do use this weapon when I was really anointed. I remember in the 50s when I used to speak in towns. I remember in the 60s when I used to cast demons out. This is the oil I used to use or this is a suit or this is a priestly attire that God told me to wear when I really used to function as a man of God and in authority I used to do that but those days are gone life is a little quieter now but God is saying to us today there need to be a revival of the power and the weapons of God listen there are too many empowered men and women of God that are dying before their time because of the success of demons and devils uh, through his servants uh, and through his tools. Uh, there are too many godly men dying because people are going to the Obia man uh, and to a mother and to the voodoo preacher and say give me a portion. There are many people who are coming into the house of God and they're planting Obia with witchcraft, santeria, gumbo, whatever you want to call it, in the house of God to destroy the church of God. And the reason why this is happening is because we have laid aside the tools. And we don't believe that the devil is as active as he is. And when the devil gets you to believe that he's not doing like he used to, he's able to come in to destroy the house. There are too many Christians that are nursing demonic illnesses with antibiotics and cold flu medicine because you, you find it difficult to believe uh, that the person who speaks with such diction and looks like she is royalty is wicked enough on the inside to be doing you harm uh, but the Bible tells us that the scribes and the Pharisees the descendants of Abraham the keepers of the law of Moses they plotted to kill Jesus Nothing new under the sun. There are too many believers that are fighting aimlessly in spiritual warfare because they have been misled as to who the real enemy is, where he is, and where the battle is to be fought. There, there are too many Christians that lie in telling a lie on the liar that lied on them. Uh, that is earth realm battle. Uh, it doesn't yield any fruit. Uh, there are too many Christians uh, that are fighting warfare in the flesh uh, and they think that they are winning. Uh, it's a time to cast off the flesh uh, and begin to function uh, in the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and begin to condemn uh, every lying tongue uh, that has risen up against you. Oh, 
And it's time out for that. That is why there's so much confusion in the church. Because we are not fighting the battle how we should fight it. You have Christians fighting in the flesh. She don't speak to me and I don't speak to her. She lied on me so I tell it back on her. And you feel that you are doing yourself justice. You are operating in demonic anointing. That is how the devil's flow. You need to rise up and cast the demons of lies out of the house of God. You need to get on your knees and pray like Esther and push until something happens the devil must move the devil must leave the house of God God did not build the church for the devil to live in it it is for the church but I hear the Lord saying today if you would return to the old landmark like the songwriter says, if you would get back to business, basics, if you would return to familiar ground uh, as Jacob uh, returned to Bethel, he said you would receive a revival, a renewal, and a refreshing of his power that will put the armies of hell to flight as Moses, uh, Gideon, Daniel, Esther, and Jotham did. Uh, remember Daniel said, the people that know their God uh, shall be strong uh, and do great exploits. Uh, let me tell you, Daniel knew what he was talking about. Uh, he lived in a world and a realm uh, where the occult uh, ruled the nation. Uh, he worked next to the sorcerer, the diviner, the witchcraft man, uh, and the conjurer. And under an old covenant, uh, Daniel prevailed uh, and he writes and he tells uh, a New Testament church uh, the people that know Yahweh the people that know Jesus Christ the people that are filled with the Holy Ghost and power shall do great exploits if we are going to prevail against the onslaught that is coming against the anointed of Jesus Christ You've got to get back to the old landmark. You've got to get back to that old time religion. The old time religion works. I always say the older folks didn't have no vines expository and no strong concordance. They didn't have an NIV Bible, but they knew that Jesus was a miracle working God. The older people knew how to pray until God moved. But in a modern society, we are quitting too regularly and some of us are going to the devil for help it is wrong it is sinful it's an abomination it is diabolical when you walk out of the house of God and go to Satan to ask him for counsel and help it is wickedness at its highest order When God created man, man was created by a God of power. Man became a living soul because power was breathed into his nostrils. God breathed the breath of life into man. The anointing of God was breathed into man. The spirit of the living God was breathed into man and man became a living soul. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ and you became born again, that same breath was breathed into you and you became a living spiritual soul. So on the inside of every born again believer is the anointing of God. The spirit of God is also known as the the anointing of God and God has given the church the anointing God wants us to return to the invincibleness of his anointing the anointing is more than speaking in tongues the anointing is more than shaking and quaking and bending and running that's the that's the definition or the only idea some people think that the anointing is the anointing is more than falling 
falling out on the floor. Those are manifestations of the anointing. But the greatest portion or the greatest manifestation of the anointing of God is when the raw, radical, supreme power of God flows through your life. A revival of the power and the weapons of God. It was in this anointing that Queen Esther approached her husband. She was faced with a witchcraft attack by Haman that was executed through her husband. Her husband, number one political official, the head of the armed forces, was about to wipe her people out. It was a death threat. And there are death threats that have been issued on the heads of many men and women of God today because the devil wants the anointing of God out of the earth. You've got to wake up from out of your sleep. You've got to stop being naive. You've got to get up out of the coma that you have been lulled in and understand that there's a death threat on the life of your leaders. The Lord, the devil wants them to be dead. Mordecai was the leader. And Haman was mad because he couldn't get him to do what he wanted him to do. But little did Haman know before he got to execute his wickedness, God had the anointing in place to bring about salvation. And so the Bible tells us that Haman went to the Obia man to cast the pearl, the lot, to get the lucky date, as was the customs of the Persians to find out when would be a good day to kill the Jews. And he got the date, it was the 13th of December. But little did the Obia man know, if you understand the God that you serve, if you really know the God that you serve, when Haman went to the Obia man, God went to the Obia man with Haman. And while they're there, they're calling on Baal or Marduk or Ashtaroth, and they're doing all their demonic chants and rituals, God is in the midst of it. And when the lot was cast, God gave the date. For the Bible tells us in Proverbs 16.33, the lot may be in the hand of man, but the outcome is of God. What Haman did not realize, he got the date for his own death. I'm talking about a revival of the power and the weapons of God. You must know the kind of anointing that rests upon your life and stop fearing what people go to get done and understand that God breathed into you the power to push back, to push out, to trample, to nullify any spirit of death that will seek to come. Esther wasn't fighting any little battle. This was a battle that called for high-level warfare intercession. This wasn't just a light prayer. You know, five-minute thing, Father, help us now. This was high-level intercession. Three days of prayer and fasting before the Lord. Esther understood that the anointing makes the difference. She understood that there's power of God in prayer. You see, the anointing of God distinguishes the difference between a believer who can pray and a powerful, high-level battle axe in intercession intercessor that's why the devil likes to get into the house of God and mess with the intercessory departments because you are the weapons of mass destruction in the earth you are the watchmen on the wall you're the ones that know how to decree and how to declare and if you could sort deception and lies in the leader or in a couple of people he know that the bombs that you 
you are sending is not going to be effective. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to rise. I command you to stand up today and make the decision. I am going to wage war upon the devil's war because we are in the latter days. You see, an anointed intercessor positioned himself as an arbitrator between the forces of darkness and the oppressed before God and make dynamic prayers that prevail over and against the enemy riches. This is what Esther did. She stood in the gap between the devil and the nation of Israel and she spoke to God as intercessors of this house this is your command God expects you to do it when you come to prayer it shouldn't be because prayer meeting is every Monday and pastor tells us to pray for him because he's preaching here this week or preaching here next week you shall come with a mission that when a soldier leaves the US to go to Iraq or any part of the world that he said he leaves with his gun and his mind is geared I am going to take the enemy down you need to leave home with a mission you need to leave home with the anointing and by the time we hold hands before we can release the power of God it's already moving if you understand who you are and the clout that you have as an intercessor, you will break the devil's back every time. High level warfare intercessors only fear God. You only fear God. Because you understand that God is the almighty God. And when the spirit directs you to the spot. And the spirit directs you to the seat. You put down your foot in anointing and power. And you stand up upon the obia. You stand up upon the spirit of death. You stand up upon the curse. Because the seed of the woman is a crush. The neck of the enemy. You stand upon it in anointing and power. The blood of Jesus. The blood Lord of Jesus, I call upon the war and blood of Jesus Christ. I call upon the speaking blood of Jesus Christ. I command you in the name of Jesus to leave. I crush you. I grind you to powder for the rent of glory. Of child, may you know how to pray. You have to stop coming to church just to fulfill duty. Some people come because I'm on the team and they would like to get off. Because you've allowed the devil to weary you. You shall make the devil regret every day that you wake up. You shall make him regret every time you open your mouth. You shall make him regret. Esther prayed. She prayed, and by the time her intercession was over, Haman's neck was off. When you know how to pray, you can make a long battle short. When you know who God is, you don't have to bust a sweat in the name of Jesus. When you understand like the centurion, I'm a man under authority. I walk in authority in the realm of the spirit. I'm not Barack Obama. I am not a local senator. But I wield more power than any of these great men have. Because I'm divinely anointed. Because when my God and Father made the earth, he said, have dominion. The earth belonged to me. And any demon in the earth is an illegal immigrant. And I'm anointed to send it back to hell in the name of of Jesus Christ I'm not begging it to leave I'm commanding you to leave when you are a high level intercessor when you're a familiar friend 
or the one you take communion with or the one your prayers have brought deliverance to, or the one you lend your Bible to, hears from the Spirit that what you are doing is not of God, and their assignment is to remove you one way or the other, or as they say in the old Western world, wanted physically dead or alive. This is a kind of intercession that has to be made. When people hear from familiar spirits, when Baal begin to speak in the church and say the vision is not of God, Bishop has gone too far. This is a kind of high level intercession because any spirit that opposes the will of God in the earth is a spirit of death. It's the spirit of Antichrist, and you've got to face it like Esther sat down at the banquet table with him, and she was having the victory because he thought that he was having royal dinner, he was having his last supper because she knew by tomorrow your head will be mine. High level warfare intercessors need to know how to write legislation in the spirit realm. We need to start writing legislation. We text a lot of rumor, a lot of gossip, a lot of slander, a lot of lies, a lot of misleading information. But high level intercessors, when they get down to prayer, when God reveals the operation of the enemy, they begin to write legislation. They begin to write laws. In the realm of the spirit uh, that disarms the enemy and makes the devil impotent. What are you doing with your intercession? After they've written it, they effect and enforce it. They make certain that it happens. They establish it. They make it permanent. And then they release it into the earth realm. God wants a revival of his spirit in the earth. God wants a revival of the real anointing of God in the church. We are having too many people coming in and disrupting the house of God under the guise that is the spirit of the Lord that is upon them. We've got to begin to address unruly behavior in the house of God. When I'm in the pulpit, I'm the prophet that is prophesying. When I'm in the pulpit, I'm the preacher that is preaching. When I'm I'm in the pulpit only my one voice has to be sounded because God is speaking through me God is moving through me whatever you are getting shut it down and shut it up because God is ministering through the man of God That is why we don't know what is of God and what is not of God. Because you don't know prophetic protocol and you don't know how to behave yourself in the house of God. When the spirit comes upon you, you've got to learn uh, how to hone it together, how to pull yourself together and let the work of God move forward. Uh, a lot of these outbursts uh, are distractions uh, from the devil to stop you from getting the words uh, of eternal life. And then when you have to speak, people get offended. Oh, he embarrassed me. He insulted me because you feel that you are fuller of the Holy Ghost than the man of God that is the head of the house. You think he don't feel like you do? What if he got happy when he was preaching? You wouldn't get any word of God. You need to discipline yourself because when you are on your job and you are talking to God with your mouth closed and the same spirit come upon you, you sit down and keep quiet because you don't want to be fired but you feel that you can make the house of God look like if it's a gangster hangout
decency and order must be in the house of God. And because you don't know how to learn, how, haven't learned and wouldn't even try to learn how to behave yourself. The devil has come in among us through spirits of rebellion and disobedience. My God, the Bible says uh, disobedience uh, is like the spirit of witchcraft, uh, rebellion, stubbornness and rebellion. It's like idolatry. And you're wondering how the devil is coming in. And then you want to put the blame on the pastor. But it flows from the head to the body. The devil is a liar. You better own your iniquity today and repent to God for the wickedness that you have been doing and let the Spirit of God do a work on the inside of you today. No devil is in the leadership. No demon is in the bishop. No contrary spirit is in the first lady. It's just like you don't want to behave. And some people, as soon as they get a prophecy from the who is who, they feel they can take over now. This is not your church. God didn't give it to you. If you don't want to obey the rules, find somewhere where you can behave as you like. But this is a house of excellence. This was built for the honor and the glory of God and the will of God shall be done. My Lord, my God. My Lord, my God. It was in the anointing of the spirit of the living God that Moses appeared before Pharaoh who was the head of witchcraft and sorcery and confronted him. Remember in the past he was afraid of this kind of tyrannical king. But in the power of God, God used him to confront every demon and devil that terrorized, abused, and held his people in bondage and captivity in Egypt. This battle was of the highest level. This is the kind of battle that you call a power encounter. A power encounter defined as you and demonic entities literally engage in battle. When this occur, you, the Lord, and all of heaven are literally engaged in the battle. Power encounters take place when the enemy wants to stop you from making further dents in his activity in the earth through the vision of the church and through your personal life. Or when the sons of Satan request that he either come or send one of his strong men to kill you because they hate who you are in God and the success of your ministry. So when the devil comes himself to fight you, the man or the woman of God, it means that you are doing something exceptional. The Bible tells us that when the children of Israel was leaving the wilderness, that Balak hired Balaam to curse them because the shout of the king was among them. The Bible tells us that when Joshua was conquering the inhabitants of Canaan, that Jabin hired an army to come with him to kill him because he was prevailing over his enemies. The scripture tells us that Herodias asked for the head of John the Baptist because John the Baptist was determined that the moral laws of God will be obeyed in the land. The Pharisees plotted to kill Jesus because his ministry was yielding eternal results. In the book of Acts, it tells us that 40 Jews bound themselves together with the determination that they were going to kill the Apostle Paul because of the effectiveness of his ministry. This is what Pharaoh and his magicians did. They called on hell to send their best because God was in Egypt upon Moses to destroy the devil's control and rule in Egypt. 
Moses was literally waging war with some of hell's mightiest demons. When the water was turned into blood, Moses was up against Happy, the god of the river Nile. When frogs came upon the land, he was up against Hika, the toad goddess. When the lice came, he was up against Geb, the god of the earth. When the flies came, he was up against Kephi, the god of insects. When the boils came upon the livestock, he was up against Apis, the bull god. He was up against Thoth, the god of medicine with the boils. When hail and fire came, he was up against Not, the sky goddess. When the locusts came, he was up against Anubis, the god of the fields. When darkness came upon Egypt, he was up against Ra, the sun god. And when the death of the firstborn came, he was up against Pharaoh, the god king. Whenever you are doing great ministry, whenever you are making dance in what the devil is doing, he will seek to try to take your life. But when you understand the power of the anointing of God, you can face any demon. You can face any devil. You don't have to back up. You don't have to back down. You just do like Moses. Moses was not afraid to make forceful violent assaults on the enemy. Why? Because when he was called at the burning bush to do the task, he was anointed and made more powerful to be in direct contact with the enemy under God's direction. I want demons and devils to hear me today. The reason why this building is still here and this work is still going on is because of the anointing of God. The devil has never been able to prevail against it. Pharaoh did all he could. He called his best and he tried uh, to duplicate what Moses was doing through God. And by the time they came to the third plague, every magician said to Pharaoh, we cannot mess with this any further. This is nothing but the finger of Yahweh. And I want you to know that when you pray your ungodly prayers, uh, and when you side with the man of the enemy, and you hear the prophecy that he's going to be sick this weekend, and you come to church, Church, uh, trying to see uh, if there's a visiting preacher and he is in the pulpit it is nothing but the finger of God that is at work uh, it's the anointing of God that is upon his life uh, Jehovah Rapha it's on the inside uh, and you can't touch uh, what God has blessed uh, you can't make sick uh, what God has made healthy you can't destroy what God is preserved you see some of you come from churches where your pastors was keeping dolly church you know what is dolly church when you rent a building and bring two chairs out of your house and you put something up front there you say i'm pastor and everybody in dolly house do as they please you've come to the house of god there's an anointed man here there's a set man in this house. Uh-huh. He wasn't voted in. Uh, no board of directors make the decision. If he's going to be here in 2012, he's going to be here until God calls him home. No deacon decides uh, if he can pastor over me. If you don't want him to find somebody else, but as long as you're here, he will be pastor over this congregation with all authority, all rule, all power, because God God called strong men to lead. God called courageous men to lead. God called valiant men to lead. God called demon busting men to lead. We don't run from devils. We don't run from Pharaoh. We don't run from Persia. We don't run from Babylon. We face the fire. We go down into the lion's den because it's the anointing. It's the anointing of God. It's the power of God. I decree today in the name of Jesus Christ like never before. 
the anointed has come. He is here. 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 The spirit of the living God is here today to move among us, to thrust the vita, to get rid of the tears, and to establish a new church that will go forward to do what God wants done. understand the anointing you don't have to worry and fear and you understand who called you see when Moses was washing the sheep and he saw the bush burning and it wasn't consumed and he went and he looked and God began to speak and he said I've called you to do a work for me and he said to God, well, I'm not capable. And he gave him the whole nine yards. God says, that's why I want you. Because you're not going to boast in your own strength. For it's not by might nor by power. But it's by my spirit, Moses. The same anointing that is in the New Testament. It's the same anointing in the Old Testament. The spirit has never been upgraded. He has always been all power. And God said to Moses, put your hand in your bosom. And he did it. He took it out. It was leprous. He said, put it back in. And he took it out and it was whole again. God said, this is what I want you to understand. There's no God like me nowhere. There's no power in the earth like my power. I'm sending you to a people that perform magic. I'm sending you to people who believe in the devil that does liar wonders. But right here before I commission you, Moses, I am going to reveal to you what real power looks like and how real power operates. This is what is in this house. You are looking at real power and you are seeing the operation of the real power of God and the man of God you can't cut it you can't snip it you can't bribe it you can't threaten it you can't frighten it because he has seen uh, the face of God and the hand of God is upon him mightily talking about the anointing of God there are too many threats made on the lives of men and women of God and people are feeling they're going to get away with it a couple months ago all of a sudden I began to feel sick in my body like, like, like a bad feels that kind of thing that makes your body feel weak and nervous and I'm praying and I'm praying and nothing is happening and so I sought God some more, and he said, it's a spirit of infirmity. So I cast it out, and I was made whole immediately. A couple months later, the same thing happened again. At first I thought when it came, it was just strictly from the devil because of my preaching of the gospel. But when it occurred again, I understood that somebody had gone for the OB, a man for me. I don't even have a car to drive or a house to live in, but somebody went to the OB, a man for me. It tells you when you are anointed, people don't worry about where you live or what you drive. The devil is concerned about the power you're pumping. You understand? I don't come out with a shotgun, I come with a Scud missile. I don't miss, I hit all my targets. Because the Spirit of the Lord is my radar. When he said, that's her, I hit one time. And you must die never to be reincarnated or resurrected. I'm not doing like King Saul. I'm coming back with a gag. I am making sure you are crushed to powder. So there are those who go to the OB man for me. And they want me so sick that I would not be able to leave home to preach. So I went into the presence of God and I said to God, now I know you. I know that you are the almighty God. You have all the power around here. I'm not assuming I know you, you see. I had my burning bush experience. So I know you. I said, another thing I know is, everybody that is going to the OB, a man for me, you wake them up. 
every sinner, every heathen, and every wicked person that is alive, you, God, woke them up. And you are trying to tell me that the workers of iniquity is going to walk around with healthy bodies, take the money that you allow them to get, and go to the devil and tell the devil to do me a portion. And I must be struggling for my life. And they're waiting to say, Aha, aha, she's withering, she's down to size two, she's skin and bones now. Any minute now, you're going to hear she is dead, and you are waking them up. Are you not God or are you God? I send it back. I send it back. I send back the spirit of death, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of disease. I send it double. I send it seven times seven to send her. I command demons and devils. Go and kill your master. Go and kill who sent you. Destroy them. Destroy their bodies. Destroy their marriages, destroy their homes, destroy their children, destroy their finances. I send you back, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, in authority and power, go back to who sent you. You see that day, I just walked into the presence of God, not presumptuously, but when you know who you are, I just walked in to the presence of God and I began to tell him, I said, enough is enough. They ain't killing me. I ain't dying like pastor so-and-so. My enemies is not going to come and see me lying down in a coffin because they went to Haiti and buy a portion or went to Ghana and get an African chief to fix me. God, no. I want to go to the morgue and tell them, pull the bin and say, take that in the name of Jesus Christ. No, no, we ain't dying around here. We are not living under any curse. If you think that you are that bad, or you are the gang of conspirators like Cora, Datum, and Abiram holding private prayer meetings and curse sessions that is going to work, I come to tell you today, as an agent of the living God, a curse to the righteous is causeless. It can't lighter. I send it back. I send it back. I send it to Jamaica. I send it to Canada. I send it to England. I send it to every state in the United States. Wherever the enemy of this great assembly is, I send you back. Go and destroy them. Go and kill them. Go and rob them. Go and terrify them. Go and beat them as you beat the sons of Sceva in the name of Jesus. Hear me, demons and devils. I command you in the name of the resurrected Lord of glory. Go back to your sin. Nobody losing weight around here. We're not getting gray here. We sleeping at night. Our sleep is not trouble. The battle is not ours. It is the Lord. Only with our eyes shall we live to see the reward of the wicked. Some of you, you better cut off the phone calls because the upholder is just as good as the thief. And any day now, God is going to bolt his wrath. Like he said in the book in the Old Testament, he says, separate yourself from the tent of Korah. Separate yourself from evil men and women who come to poison you because you're going down. The hope of the hypocrite shall perish. The house of evildoers are coming down. God is about to expose and release his judgment. Hear me by the spirit of grace. Separate yourself. And listen to me. Don't think for one moment 
that I was called and told what to preach. Nobody don't bribe me to preach or tell me what to preach. I'm not trying to get an engagement. I've been called by God and my platform is already sent. This was not even the message that I had prepared to come. As I went back into prayer, God gave this to me. I finished this Friday night about 1 p.m. I was now printing and packing so that when I left New Jersey, I could come to give this word. I give this word under the authority and the direction of the Holy Ghost. I have no apologies to make for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Separate yourself. Remove the numbers. Stop going to their houses. And don't you dare call them and tell them what God said. Watch and see what God will do to the wicked of the righteous. Don't be a demonic informant and tell them what happened here today. Receive the word of God. Hide it in your bosom and watch and see many days hence. You will see what God will do, will do to those who try to stop the work of God. It is a sad day in the house of God when you can't eat and drink from people and feel comfortable. I know what I'm talking about. All I have is a metro card and I can't eat from any and everybody. Do you hear me? This is what it has come to because witches are coming into the house of God. I had one come to Wall Street for me. She come to put a portion upon me. And I stood up there and the Lord began to position my hand. And she kept saying, you keep putting your hands in different positions and it's confusing me. I don't know what you are saying. And the Lord said to me, she thinks that you are Mason and you are signing. So she can't understand the sign. So she's confused because if she come to her to fell a Mason, she would be in trouble. And I got the Lord continue to move my hands. And she keep going in the bag and pulling back and she said there you go again another sign and I can't understand that and the Lord said to me this is what I mean when I said I teach your fingers to fight uh, and your hands to war so sometimes when the spirit of the Lord takes your hand in the congregation let him use it he's causing the enemy to become as still as stone People are bringing deadly things into the house of God. And they want to feed it to the man of God. But you know, as I was preparing this word, what the Lord showed me, that as a part of the great commission, after Jesus' resurrection, he said to his disciples, listen, a part of this great calling is that people are going to bring poison food for you. People are going to bring demon infected food to give you. In other words, the devil is in the pot. Like the prophet cried out, man of God, there's poison in the pot. But Jesus said, because of the anointing that is upon your life, when you eat it, it shall not hurt you. This is the kind of anointing that is in this house. So when the sister with the cute suit comes and she has the apple with the poison in it, or the brother with the blue suit comes and he brings one of his wife's special cakes uh, with the portion in it, uh, we don't have to fear if the Holy Ghost tells us eat it. We are going to eat it right there in front of you. And then the anointing shake off the demon. Shake off the devil. Paul, shake it off. Shake it off. Because the power of God is on the inside. We are anointed to eat deadly food. Drink deadly drink. And then in your presence, shake it off. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are we able to do this? Because it's the finger of God. The finger of God. 
in every church there's a remnant and this message is for the remnant God says I want a revival of my spirit and a revival of my power you've got to start keeping company with people who think that your belief in spiritual warfare is too far-fetched the devil wants you to think that you're becoming an extremist I'm an extremist I'm not fanatical but I'm an extremist I refuse to doubt the capabilities of the enemy because if you believe he doesn't exist he would work covertly and so he would trick you but God wants a revival of the anointing of God it's by the anointing look through the Bible every miracle that took place came as a result of the anointing you must understand who you are carrying the anointing is a divine personality that possess you that cloaks you and that comes upon you the Bible tells us that when God commissioned Gideon to go and kill the Midians it says that Gideon Gideon was clothed in the spirit of God. Gideon wore the power of God as if it was a cloak. God wants us to wear the power of God. To carry the power on the inside of us. And then let it come down upon us. It's a tree fall anointing. You can't touch a man that carries a tree fall anointing. You are in danger in your life. The time has come. The time has come for you to make a decision. If God be God, serve Him. If God be God, serve Him. We have to have a faith like Flint, like Adam and Stone. What have I come to say? I come to say that the devil is seeking to steal, to kill, to destroy, to shut down this church, to disgrace the members and its leaders and put another one under his belt. But God says it can't happen because there is a revival of my spirit's power and anointing. I make no boast in the flesh. But when God sends me with a message like this, I'm the man for the job. I may not look like it, but I'm a highly skilled warrior in the army of God. Mm -hmm. I rank with men like David and Moses. I know who God is and what he's capable of doing. And he's never lost a battle yet. And he will never fail in the earth. We're the intercessors in this house. Where are the intercessors in this house? I want you to come to the altar. Mm-hmm. I want you to make a straight, even line. A straight line. With room that one can walk in front and behind. A straight line. The intercessors of this house. One straight line. I want it to be clearly defined as to who you are every intercessor in this house one straight line are you all here move quickly by the Holy Ghost Mm -hmm. those of you in the front row just step back for me please just 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 stand in the second row that I can see clearly or the intercessors. If you're on the front row, you're not an intercessor, just slip into a pew for the time being. If you're like the pastor there, could you just go to the second row for me, please? All of you over here, including this couple, you're an intercessor. Pardon? Amen. I just want to see who the intercessors are clearly. Do you understand? Come forward. Do you understand who you are in this house? And that you are not supposed to permit the enemy to come in and do the things he's been doing? Have you seen the God of the burning bush? 
Whenever you smell the enemy or sense the enemy, you are to declare war upon the enemy. If this church is going to prevail and the ministries are going to go forth in the earth like never before, you just can't, you should not leave home only to come to pray. You can't have a mindset that you are just going to pray. You have to come to understanding that you are establishing kingdom rule in the earth. You must come in the frame of mind that you want God to reveal to you what is going on that is not known and deal with it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are to walk the perimeters of this building as Joshua marched around Jericho and in the anointing of God pull up and uproot and tear down anything you sense in this house that is not of God. You are not to allow what the enemy has sent to prosper and to flourish. You are to know things before they happen. You should not be fighting after the fact. But you shall stop it from coming in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants to pour a new kind of anointing. The kind that Esther flowed in when she stood before the demon of Persia and the people of God and spoke to God and said, God, send it back to sender. I want you to close your eyes. Raise your hands towards heaven. Because if you are not going to cover this leadership, if you are not going to cover this ministry as David covered the nation of Israel under Saul's rule, you need to move from here. This is a prayer meeting. This isn't a this isn't a, this isn't a club. This is an army you have joined. You are warriors, and you've got to wage war upon the devil's war. And if you intend to take your prayer to another level, if you intend to flow with authority and use the weapons of God, you've got to receive uh, this anointing that God has given you today. Now, Spirit of the Living God, come, come, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, come.